Hello, and welcome to the Fiber Circus. This is episode 22, and it is June 19th of 2019. After a long month away, thank you very much for coming back. I'm your host, Elizabeth, coming to you from southern Indiana, where I have a farm called Spotted Circus, and I run a hand-dyeing, knitting, spinning, machine knitting, and a little bit of everything else kind of business. Um, for all my returning viewers, thanks a lot for waiting in there and coming back. And for all the new viewers, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, normally, I'm a bi-weekly podcast, but unfortunately, there were some crazy events that happened that all lined up just perfectly. And so as a result, I wasn't able to podcast because I had a lot of stuff happening and it was a little bit of chaos, to put it nicely. So I'm back and hopefully back onto my every two week schedule because I don't have a ton of stuff backed up one after another as for a while now. So on to the knitting. Um, if you need to get a hold of me, you can contact me on Facebook, Instagram, and Ravelry is Spotted Circus. And all of my contact details and all the show notes will be just down below in the description box if you need to know anything else about what it is that I've said today. So on to the knitting now. Um, so in a month, you would hope that I'd gotten some kind of knitting done, and I've been bitten by sweater bugs again for some reason. Um, and in case you can't tell, I have a bit of a cold. Um, I came back from Colorado with some kind of creepy crud that is in my chest right now and sinuses, and it's kind of nasty. Right before I left for Colorado again, I managed to come down with poison sumac. So I've got, they're kind of hard to see, but I've got these nasty little marks here and here and my husband literally had his entire arm blister up with poison sumac so as you can tell we're obviously not very good at, ident at identifying it but I was a hot itchy mess for most of my Colorado trip which didn't make it very much fun so anyways I've been doing a lot of knitting to make a long story short so the first thing that I've been working on is my Meraki tank by Sarah Grishbeck and this is what the Meraki tank looks like it's knit in a sport weight and it's got a mesh panel on the back and like a keyhole on the front. And last week I was way down there where that orange puffball is. So as you can see, I've made a bit of progress. Um, I went through all the decreases for the waist shaping and I'm currently getting ready to start increasing back out again for the shaping, at which point um, I've done one so far. I've got I think six or seven waist increases to do. And once I get that, I'll be up to the armholes, and then it'll just be a matter of doing the top half. So, pretty good progress so far on it. I'm knitting this on size six needles, and they are um, Knitter's Pride wood needles. They're the interchangeables. So, it's going pretty well. The yarn that I'm currently using is called Barocco Remix Light, and it's made from 100% recycled fibers. And it is, so it's a 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. It says that you can machine wash it, but lay it flat to dry. So the colorway is called 6960. Very original name. Um, I'd kind of call it like a deep reddish color. And it's got some hints of tweediness in it. Um, and I think that's coming mainly from the silk and the linen. There's a few little bits of blue, and I don't know if that was a mistake, but there's just a little divot of blue every now and then. Um, the mesh panel that I'm going to be doing will be doing in a gold color. So I picked up this yarn at my friend Linda's yarn shop, who's over in Kentucky, called Eagle Bend Alpacas Fiber and Yarn Shop, I think. Um, she's by the Ark, if you know what the Ark is in Kentucky, um, where the dinosaurs are. So... Um, it's going pretty well. I worked on this quite a bit because it was pretty mindless. I just had to think about every so often when I was doing increases. It's still currently in my pack of corn or my llama corn bag, but it's not going to fit in there for very much longer. And it's really kind of stuffed in there as it is. So I'll probably be upgrading it to a new bag soon. So that was the first thing that I worked on. The second thing I worked on is I pulled out my rainbow in the snow. No. Rainbow in the Storm sweater that I started um, a cup about a month or so ago, and I was doing it with some in the deep UC mini skeins, and I'd knitted about I want to say seven inches on it, and I wasn't too thrilled with how it was looking. Um, there was way too much white in it, 
and I was at the top scale of the pattern. Well, I got to looking at the designer's webpage on Ravelry, and she'd released a plus-size pattern, evidently in December, after I'd purchased the original pattern. So I messaged the designer, and she was kind enough to go ahead and send me the plus-size pattern, so that way I could guarantee that I'd be able to make it in a size that'll fit me. So, I ripped the entire thing out. And this is two strands being held together at the same time. So ripping out, to be honest, sucked. Um, but I did it. And then I restarted again. So, look, here's my rainbow in the snow, or rainbow in the storm again. Um, this is on my Superwash sock base. Um, I think I'm going to call this colorway oil slick. I'm going to be doing it this time with mini skeins that I dye up. Um, because the color just wasn't working out quite the way as I'd planned it to. So I am got to the point out at Estes Park where I'm ready for the next color, but I haven't dyed the mini skeins yet, so I had to stop. I could have kept on going, but that would have been kind of silly because it would have been just a waste of some knitting. So you can see this is kind of the color effect that I'm wanting in my sweater with the way that the rainbow stacks up. So I'm planning on dyeing more probably neon colors and doing my rainbow that way. So it's on hold for a little bit until I get my um, yarn dyed up for it. This is being knit on size 9 needles, and these are carbons interchangeables. Um, they're nice and slippery. And then I have a progress keeper, which is this cute little llama corn or pack of corn, depending on which one it is you want to claim it is. And I got that from Rick from Whimsy Stitches actually last year at SSK. So I'm going to make it a point to move it. And maybe that'll motivate me to get these mini skeins dyed. So I can continue on with this. Because this is very thoughtless. There is no shaping in this. It's just a giant boxy <coughs> style sweater. So that was the second thing I worked on. And that is living in my llama's knitting bag from... Ginger Snap That out of Canada. And I love this little bag. It's really cute. Um, I've gotten a stain on it already, right here in the llama, which is kind of disappointing. But it's a light colored fabric, so that's kind of to be expected. Eventually, I'll probably try to actually clean it up a little bit. But for now, you know, I mean, it doesn't affect my project inside. The world's not going to end. So, what's been eating up the rest of my knitting time in this past month, you'd say? Well, I had a bit of driving, and unfortunately I couldn't knit while I'm driving, and that was like an 18 to 20 hour trip each way. So I lost out on like two full days of knitting just in driving, which kind of sucks. But I decided to cast on another project, because I was sitting at my booth at Estes Park, and it was just me. Um, my husband was originally going to go along, but because of his poison sumac, he decided not to. So I was kind of stuck in my booth, so I couldn't really shop you know, and like look at everybody else's boots, which in a way is probably a good thing. But I just dyed up some new yarn right before I came and it kept calling out to me and I decided that, well, by Sunday afternoon it hadn't sold. So I decided I'm going to sell it to me. So in a way, it's not technically stack acquisition, but in a way it is. So look at this. Do you see something? It maybe kind of looks a lot like this. You can tell what my inspiration was when I dyed this. Um, this is my Superwash sock base, and I'm calling it Pink Pop. And it's a 7525 Merino um, nylon. And it's neon pink with hints of fluorescent orange and blue and hints of purple. And I decided, wow, that would go really well with my brush Surrey in the Grape Ape colorway. See, I think those go really well together. And the brush Surrey silk is 74% Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry silk. And I'd been eyeballing online a pattern that Tin Can Knits had just released called the Love Note Sweater. And this is kind of a far away picture of it. But you can see it's a sweater that's got this lace detailing. They look kind of like little trilobites. They're probably supposed to be leaves, but I'd call them trilobites. And it's knit with a strand of, most people use mohair, but I'm kind of allergic to mohair, so I'm going to use this um, Surrey alpaca instead. And I did a lot of reading on Tin Can Knit's website, and her patterns are really great. They're extremely detailed. Um, this pattern goes up to 
a size hmm, 66 inch bust and they suggest choosing one with between 4 to 12 inches of positive ease so I'm making the extra extra large which is a 56 so I should have roughly about 7 inches of ease this has an option to be a cropped sweater which this one is a cropped sweater or regular length my plan is to long term make it regular length but I want to try to get it done by SSK in a few weeks so I think what I'm gonna do is knit it down to the cropped length and then do the sleeves and the neckline so that way it looks like it's a done sweater but I can always pick it back up again and extend it so this sweater is knit using two yarns held double so you've got the brushed Surrey and the um, regular fingering weight and it's knit on size 10 needles so let me just show you how quickly this knitting goes I cast this on so today is Wednesday I think I cast it on Saturday maybe and the yoke is done and I've already divided for the sleeves so you come you pr cast on provisionally and then you come back and do decreases for this yoke and then actually knit the neckline but the whole all the lace is done so you can see there's all my little bitty trilobite lace things and holding the mohair along with I don't want to lose these holding the mohair along with this fluorescent mutes it down just a tiny bit it's still gonna be a really bright colored sweater don't get me wrong but I think it's gonna look pretty good so I've just split for the armholes here and I've done all the raglan increasing on the sides and now I have roughly seven inches of stockinette to go on size 10 needles so I did all this in roughly two maybe three days the lace definitely um, only took me I think two and a half days to do so cruising along on this you can tell what project has my interest at the moment I don't know how it is that it's June and I've cast on three sweaters for some reason I mean in June really you should be knitting lightweight shawls or something but in my mind it means hey let's knit with fingering weight held double and make sweaters because why not so yeah I'm pretty happy with it so far um, it's gonna glow under black light because the pink and the orange in there um, are fluorescent reactive and when I block it out it should actually open up quite a bit so yeah I'm hoping it's not itchy the Surrey has a few guard hairs in it I can see them um, it is an imported yarn unfortunately um, I have yet to find a company in the US that can make a brushed Surrey yarn so I like it I'm hoping to re-dye these colorways back up and have them available as kits in case anybody else is into wild and crazy like me so that's my love note you can see lots and lots of lace lots and lots of neon on these nice huge size 10 needles and once again interchangeables and I've also put the sleeves onto interchangeables to be held because I hate picking up um, sleeve stitches so now all I'll have to do is pull off these end caps and put a needle on them and pick them back up pretty easily so my plan is to knit down to the um, cropped version length and then pick up the sleeves and the neck so out of 300 and I think 26 yards of my Surrey this is all I have left so I've almost gone through a full skein um, I think the total yardage on each yarn is a little under a thousand yards so in reality I think I'm cruising along pretty good on that um, <coughs> especially when I haven't been feeling so awesome so that has taken up the majority of my knitting right now and I've been cruising on that I felt very productive which is a nice feeling to have and I don't really have to think about it right now I just have to knit stock in it and I can do I can knit stock in it like there's nobody's business I mean it's not a whole heck of a lot to think about so spinning I did a little bit of spinning and it's really only because I was teaching a class on spinning out at Estes Park so I taught a class on core spinning out there and I had eight or nine people I think in it so I have a skein of core spun yarn and it's basically two chunks of bats into a skein so it looks kind of weird but 
there were technically two different sections. So there was this one, minus that green yarn. And then there was this bat that I had. And I showed them how you could spin straight fire star if you wanted to. You could add in some funky textures in there. Um, I have some locks. Let's see. Oh, there's a lock. Just some random little locks spun in with your spinning. It's anchored in there pretty good. So I have no idea on the yardage. It's like at least a hundred ish, I think. Um, don't really know what I'm going to do with it either because those two colors really didn't necessarily match either. So it was more or less just kind of a sample skein to show people how to do core spinning. So I got that done. Um, I'm working right now on a project of spinning samples of some of the viscose fibers like milk, pearl, um, bamboo, mint, pineapple, rose, and then um, mulberry and tussa silk. And I'm going to be spinning sample skeins and then knitting those up into swatches for the natural fiber extravaganza down in Tennessee next month. I've spun two skeins so far. And it reminds me why I don't like spinning those guys on their own because they're very slippery and you have to actually think when you're doing it. So not the most fun I've ever had spinning, but it's something I need to get done. So I'm trying to get those done and get uh, swatches done by next month. So that's my um, spinning. I haven't done a lot of machine knitting, but I did do some swatching. I bought some yarns at the fiber event that I've ended at in Greencastle in April. And they are um, like a watermelon gradient from Brenda and Heather Yarns. And it's a cotton bamboo blend. And I wanted to make a little sundress for my niece Ellie. And I did some swatching by hand. And I did not like working with that cotton. It just, it did not make my hands very happy. So I thought, I wonder if I can convert this on to work on my machine and then just seam up the size, which is much easier for me to do. So I did some swatching and the original pattern is a slip stitch. It's the slipster dress by Laura Nelkin and it's basically three stitches in a slip. And so I was doing it and then you can see here I've told myself I changed the tension gauge and then I changed the tension gauge again, and I wasn't really too thrilled with how well the slip stitch pattern was happening, so I switched up the way that the pattern was slipping, and instead I'm slipping two stitches. So I like the way that this looks. It still has some texture to it. I need to sit down and measure out the gauge and compare it to the actual pattern and see just how close I've come to getting gauge, and then probably do some modifications so that way I can get it to knit to the size that I want it to knit. So future project happening. Hopefully it'll happen before it gets cold again, but I'm planning on making a larger size so that way she can wear it for more than a year and like making a tie that she can put out around herself. So that way, if it's too big, it'll still fit her somewhat. So that is my machine knitting. Um, traveling. I have some upcoming travel still. Uh, July 29th and 30th, I'm going to be doing machine knitting down in Richmond, Kentucky at River Hill Ranch Alpacas. Uh, there's a few open spots still for that, so if you want to sign up, get a hold of me or Alvina at River Hill Ranch Alpacas and see about signing up. July 17th through 21st, I'll be at the Super Summer Knit Together Retreat hosted by the Knit Girls down in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I'm taking some classes there and then I'll be vending on Saturday and the vendors marketplace is open to the public on Saturday afternoon. I want to say it's from one to four, but you should probably check out the website just to make sure, which is super summer knit together.com. Um, a lot of great vendors will be there. And then that Sunday, um, I'm going to be teaching at the natural fiber extravaganza, which is also happening in Tennessee in Nashville. And I'm teaching core spinning and over dyeing the alpaca rainbow. And both of those classes are about full. I've opened a few more spaces in the dyeing class, but there aren't a lot of spaces left. So if that's a class that interests you, you should probably go ahead and sign up. There are workshops and lectures and a vendor hall going on on, let me see, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday um, for that event. And there's 
uh, yoga with the alpacas. There's an alpaca selfie booth um, and all sorts of interesting things out there. So if you're coming into town for the super summer knit together, you may consider going to the natural fiber extravaganza at the same time and checking out all that there. After that, um, as a definite, I've got August 23rd and 25th. I'll be at Yakapalooza in Tully, New York, and I'll be doing uh, on the yak fiber judging up there and a seminar probably covering something in regards to marketing your yak fiber to um, hand spinners and crafters. Like, so how to basically market your yak fiber and what spinners are looking for. Um, there'll be yak meat tasting, all sorts of seminars, and obviously there'll be plenty of yaks there. So if you live anywhere in the area, it'll be really interesting to come out and see. Um, the yaks are a very unique creature, and it's kind of cool to see them up close. Then, September 21st, I'm vending, vending at Knitting at the Estate, which is a retreat put on by Leading Men Fiber Arts, and that's over in central Illinois. And it's a one-day event for only a few hours, and I can't remember where the town is. But I think it's near champaign Champagne, roughly. I think it's it's only like three or four hours away from me, so I know it's not super far. Um, but I honestly don't really remember where it's at. Um, I think that the retreat's actually full already, too. But you can definitely check out Leading Men Fiber Arts, um, their Facebook page or their Instagram page, and you can probably find out more about it there. And then, October 25th and 27th, I'll be vending at SAF, which is out in Nashville, North Carolina, and that's a big three-day fiber festival. And it's a good time. There's a fleece show, there's animals, there's workshops, and all sorts of vendors. So come out and say hi. So the travels that I've just been on, when last we talked, I'd just come back from shearing at Red Granite Ranch, and my plan had been to do a podcast that Wednesday when I left for Estes Park again in Colorado. That didn't happen, as you can tell. Um, but since then, I've been out to Estes Park in Colorado. I saw a moose butt. I saw some bighorn sheep finally, but didn't get a picture. But I did see some uh, mountain goats, and they were standing right alongside the road, which was very convenient. I went up into Rocky Mountain National Park, which had just been reopened for um, traffic over the mountaintop. The snow was still a good four to five feet deep up near the top. I got up to the highest point of elevation, I think, which I think is ten or 12,000 feet, and I made it up that far and decided, you know what, I was good enough. It was, get, it was starting to storm again, and I was up at an elevation where there was snow on the ground. And I really didn't want the roads to turn slick and my van to go tumbling over the side of a mountain. So I came back down. While up in the park, I decided I was going to try to do some glamour shots of my knitwear that I'd recently finished. So I had my tripod and I kind of set up my cell phone and did like a selfie thing trying to get it to focus. Didn't focus very often, which kind of sucked. And people I know were definitely looking at me pulled alongside the road, taking pictures with my arms outstretched with a shawl on little bit strange, but I had a good time. Um, it was nice and cool up in the park too. So I did teach at Estes Park. I taught course spinning out there and it was a great class. So thanks a lot for everyone who came by and joined in the class. Um, and then I vended for two and like a quarter days. Uh, the vending was great as usual. Thanks a lot everyone for coming by. Uh, had some really exquisite alpaca fleeces for sale and I had almost a fight over one of them because somebody waited too late to say yes to one of them. So next year I have a man whose fleece is already pre-spoken for. So his owners are pretty happy about that. So I vended at Estes and then I went back to Red Granite Ranch because they're only about an hour and a half north of where Estes Park is. And we were going to shear some Koreas on Monday and we ran into a few issues with that and that ended up getting pushed back until Thursday. So Thursday I sheared 19 babies and it was difficult. I haven't ever sheared that many babies in a row. The most we've ever had here was four. So 19 babies was a herd. And these babies were hot and sweaty, which if you can imagine, and they were very, very dense, which is kind of why they were hot and sweaty. So if you can imagine it as trying to mow a lawn when it's wet and how you get those tracks where the grass doesn't quite mow perfectly, that was exactly like how shearing these babies were. Thankfully, the fleeces weren't long enough to really be of any kind of use. It was more of a 
let's get the fleece off of them and get them cleaned up so that way they look better next year. So it was a challenge. Um, definitely a challenge. And the next day, um, I left pretty soon the next morning because there was a gentleman in Illinois who had an alpaca red granite that was due August 2nd or 4th, I think. And they weren't, they hadn't been able to find a transport to take her back there. So they were getting kind of close to the window where she really needed to be moved. So I volunteered to go ahead and toss her in the van with me and take her back. And that meant instead of leaving, instead of giving myself a day to recover, I left the next day after shearing. And boy, let me tell you, that was painful. Um, when you shear, I am kneeling on the ground with like my feet flat out behind me. And I don't normally sit that way. And there's a lot of raising up and raising down. So the next day from just above my waist to my knees, the whole backside hurt. I mean, it was painful because those muscles only get used for shearing and that's about it. So then to take that and sit in a van for 18 hours as I drove with her, um, I stopped at a truck stop in Iowa and I need to use the bathroom pretty bad. And I had to park in the trucker parking because I had a trailer attached and I looked at the distance to get up to the bathrooms and there were 32 steps to go up and boy, that wasn't fun. <laughs> I seriously considered just trying to hold it and get to the next like gas station or something because those 32 steps were horrible. So I finally got home. Um, I dropped her off about midnight, um, just outside of Peoria, Illinois to a gentleman that I'd never met before. And, you know, here's this strange alpaca transporting lady with bright pink hair showing up at midnight with an alpaca for you. So that was interesting. Um, I stopped a little bit after that to take a nap for a while and I came, finally got back home Saturday afternoon-ish, probably around one, I think is when I got home. And then that night at about 6.30, we had a tornado hit about four miles from the house. That was awesome, let me tell you. My cell phone has not been getting great reception for some reason since all the tree leaves have come in. And I was standing outside taking a video of all the rain coming down and I could hear the sirens in town going off a few miles away. But I had no reception on my cell phone to tell me, hey, there's a tornado right here. So... Here I am, like the typical idiot, filming stuff, you know, as a tornado was probably behind the house going and doing some destruction. Um, nobody was hurt. There was a bunch of trees knocked down and a couple of houses with roofs and stuff taken off. But I wasn't too happy with Verizon for their lack of notification because even the emergency um, services 911 thing that's supposed to come out um, when you're in an area with an emergency like that didn't happen until almost 45 minutes after the tornado was done and gone. So I had some words with Verizon after that, and hopefully they're checking into the service to figure out why our reception suddenly so bad. So that was exciting. And then right after that, I went in for a doctor's checkup and informed them, hey, I'm pretty nasty sick. And they agreed. So got put on medicine for that. And then they drew blood and stuck paper tape on me. And look at the bruise from where I took the paper tape off. I've never had a bruise happen like that before, just from taking tape off of bandage. I'm obviously falling apart. I guess that's what happens when you hit 40. So, anyways, that's about it for this podcast. Um, I'll put up a bunch of pictures of Estes Park and some of the things I saw, and the long, long drive up into the mountains. Um, and otherwise, I guess that's about it, and I'll plan on seeing you guys in two weeks. We'll see. I won't have near as much knitting done by any means. But maybe I'll have at least the majority of the sweater done for the love note at this rate. Because size 10 needles are definitely a quick knit. So we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.
Thank mm -hmm. you.